I'm a maths teacher with an honours degree in mathematics. I'm a successful maths exam taker. In this video, I'll explain the kind of preparation you need to do from the very beginning of your course right up to the day of the exam so that you can go into your exam with confidence, ready to do your best. Of course, the first thing you need to do is know your stuff. You absolutely must know the work on which you will be tested. This seems like an obvious thing to say. How can you expect to pass the exam if you don't know the work? And yet, time after time, students who don't know anything the week before an exam somehow think they can magically wing it on the day. Go figure. It's also worth knowing what's going to be on the exam. So, ask. You might be surprised how much your teacher or lecturer is prepared to tell you. I'm a maths teacher and I'll happily tell you what's on the exam. The number of questions, the balance of topics, the kinds of questions, the level of difficulty. I won't tell you exactly what the questions say, of course, but if you listen carefully during class, you'll often hear many obvious hints. But in any case, if you're not sure what's going to be on the exam, you can't lose anything by asking. While you're at it, also ask about how you're going to be graded. This is not secret teacher business. You have a right to know. Will your performance be measured by the number of marks you get, or by comparing the quality of what you do to a fixed set of criteria and standards? What specific knowledge and skills do you need to demonstrate? Is your grade determined by percentage, by typical on-balance performance, by minimum achievement or competency, or by comparison to everyone else? Now, some of those terms were a bit teacher jargony, weren't they? Never mind. Just ask your teacher to explain exactly how your grade is determined. It's your business to know. My next idea might not seem so obvious. You need to summarise. See, when you're in class, there's an interesting effect called primacy and recency. You remember best the things said at the start of the lesson and the end. A lot of what happens in the middle gets forgotten, surprisingly quickly. The best way to solve this problem is with good note-taking. But most of us are pretty poor at taking good notes. So instead, revisit your notes as soon afterwards as you can and summarise them. I'm not saying just blindly rewrite exactly what you wrote before, and I don't think just highlighting a few key words is enough. I'm saying you need to look for all the important bits and connect the ideas in your mind so you can work out how it all fits together. Forcing yourself to organise and connect the ideas carefully will make a significant difference to how well you remember them. It's just the way our brains work. Now, there are many ways to do this. I'm not going to try to teach you how to do it here. Google note-taking systems and try a few of them out until you find something that works well for you. And for a maths exam, it's especially important that you practice, 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 and then practice some more. Why? Here's a well-established fact about the way our memory works. If you hear or do something once and then never look at it again, you'll actually forget about it pretty quickly. It's gone into your short-term memory, but that's all. If you want to remember it again later, you have to force your brain to transfer it to long-term memory and build links into it so you can get it back again when you want to. The first step is to think back over it. Remember I said to go back over your notes after each lesson? And then reading over your new summary 
is a deliberate review and really strengthens your memory. But doing maths is like any other skill. You have to actually put into practice what you've learned. So as well as reading over the summary, try doing a few simple questions. Deliberately remind yourself of what to do. How much and how well you can remember something gradually decreases. But interestingly, even if you review and practice, the rate at which you forget stays the same. So if you go back and review a few days later, you'll remember it pretty well. And then you actually won't forget as much as you did the first time. And then review it again a week later, and you'll remember it even better. Then a month later, then a few months later. Now it's time for the exam, and look how much better you remember the work than if you hadn't done all that revision. See the value of a systematic revision plan? It's just too easy to think after a lesson, I can do that, and then never look at it or practice it again until the week or even the day before the exam. In fact, if we haven't practiced it many times, it's basically impossible to relearn it well enough to perform well on a test more than minutes away. And if you have to relearn the whole content for your course, well, you simply haven't got enough minutes. So, practice. Lots. You need to start your revision no more than a week into your course, and you need to maintain it consistently right up until the exam. Like an athlete, you need to practice so much that the skills become second nature. You can only get better by practicing. If you revise and practice enough, you'll be confident that you know your stuff, and then you know you're ready to do the exam.